All right, well, what I've got here is a Sony boombox, model CFD-S01. Bought this as a birthday present for my 11-year-old, and it's missing an auxiliary input. So I've got the headphone jack, CD, radio, tape. It's all built into the circuit with electronic tuning, electronic volume, your cassette player, no big deal there. But unfortunately, no run here. Is there an auxiliary input? So let's take this baby apart and see what we can do. Okay, first I want to give a thanks to creepcrafters.com. I uh, did an internet search on hack auxiliary input or add aux input boombox or something like that and it found their project so creekcrafters.com click on static projects um, submit to like releasing them from liability it's not their fault if you hurt yourself doing this stuff uh, boombox amplifier little synopsis over here click the, the arm so thank you to Brian Patterson for posting this uh, in this article, he's he's working mostly with an analog tuner, so he was easily able to intercept the wires and tap into the signal. Uh, it's a little harder with with a digital tuner. He talks about that in here also, but it had a good tip about using a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. There we go to poke around and just listen for static while your radio is powered and then you'll know for sure when you're on the the right and left audio channels so that was that was very helpful thanks a lot guys here's the new input jack it has a nut on here to hold it to the case this would normally be used as a speaker cutout or when you plug in headphones, it disconnects the contacts to the speakers. This is a Radio Shack 8th inch stereo phone jack number 2740246. Here's the, the diagram on that. So, number one is the ground. Number two is going to be the left channel because the, the tip of the jack is of the audio jack of the cable is uh, left. Four and five are for the right. That's the sleeve on the cable. So I'll catch the left and right tuner channels at three and four, and then send them on toward the amplifier circuit along two and five. So then when I plug in the cable from the MP3, it'll break the connections and send the MP3 right down 5 and the MP3 left down number 2. So I poked around on here trying to find out all right, where can I where can I tap into this with the auxiliary and Um, this chip here looked like it might help me, but I could not make out the part numbers. It's discolored from heat or bad printing or something. There was like definitely a couple twos in it, and then I couldn't even make out the rest of the numbers. But it looked like, hey, the, the tape and the CD stuff all comes to this, and then it goes over here. To be amplified, so that was bumming me out. I couldn't figure out the, the part numbers there, uh, but I just had to move on. Uh, over here, under this panel, is all the the tuner stuff because it's digitally tuned. Here's where the, the tape head comes in, but the internet discussions I found said the sound is crappy if you use the tape input, probably because of the the voltage level. Alright, um, here's a 
chip in here that it's a Toshiba TA2068 NG. I could not find for certain a schematic on that on the internet. I found a 2068 or a 2069 N or something that was close. It seemed like a clue, but wasn't quite right. So nothing seemed all that obvious on where to tap in. But there was a good clue on the board here. At this at this ribbon cable. Alright, let's see the there's a screwdriver here. That white arrow comes to this text box. Turn the light back off there. The text box T U underscore N underscore L. T U N R C D N L C D N R L out R out. So that looked promising. But then I thought about that guy's tip on the creep show and thought, you know what? Heck, I'll just give something a try with these and see if it makes static like he was saying it would. So I'll show you that setup. Okay, so here's how I set about figuring out if I was on the right track and trying the capacitor method. I went ahead and plugged the radio into the wall. So I turned it on, turned on the tuner. Uh, the antenna is not hooked up, but I was able to get like 88.3 playing some classical music or something. Um, I hooked the transformer up to the main board. Well, of course, then turned on the tuner. And then decided to give it a try over there on that ribbon cable with the tuner circuits. Thought, oh man, I need to have to go buy a capacitor. I'll bring one home from work. And then I remembered, wait a minute. I've got the electronic project lab. So sure enough, where is it? Right there. 0.1 microfarad, just like the website says. So anyway, I hooked a wire, just the raw end of a wire to it, and according to that article, it picks up static in the house. So with that classical music playing, I touched this wire to pins one and two, and sure enough, <coughs> heard a crackle. So cool. That means I tapped into the, the tuner right and left pre-amplifier. Because then that signal comes on over here to the, the amp section. Alright, so I wanted to kick the experiment up a notch, see if this will work. So I plugged in the MP3 player, I had the, the raw ends, and it's, it's a total pain trying to hold these little strands in there. And then I realized, wait a minute, we've got these little spring connectors. So I just stuck the jack into the connector and used these wires as probes instead. So brought in the wires, um, one to ground, one to one to the left and right audio in, and then sure enough, whatever was playing through the the MP3 came out along with the classical music. They were playing at the same time. So that tells me for sure that this ribbon cable connection is where to tap in. And that's on this board internal to here. So I'll either splice into the ribbon or find a better connection on the board. Alright, got the connector installed. I think I'm basically done. The, the auxiliary jack is right there. I drilled a 730 seconds hole to put it through, and then I still had to file that a little bit to get it to fit in there. I tucked it in. It's pretty much opposite from the headphone jack. We'll see that in a minute. So here's the wires coming up to uh, 
a disconnect in case I want to remove the board or something later. I didn't even really need that. I didn't want to commit to soldering and desoldering in case I had to undo it. Alright, and so black's the ground. I've got a red and white, right and left to go to the amp, and red and white coming from the tuner circuit. Here's the ribbon cable where I undid that, and uh, I had a little trouble with my soldering iron, so one of the traces pulled up from the board, so I just yanked it on back and soldered to the, the capacitor where it was attached. And then one of the other traces, the, the left trace that I thought came over here to the mystery chip, well, it turns out I had followed the wrong line on the board. So the the left trace, which here is circled in blue, uh, that came to a capacitor. The right trace came to this capacitor. And then I was uncertain, like, well, wait a minute. Is this the connector going to the amp or coming from the tuner? So I got the capacitor back out with the, the project kit and touched the wires, or touched the wire over here, got nothing, no static, touched it over here at the ribbon, and got static. So that told me the ribbon itself is what goes to the amp. It just goes through that, that board in there to decide if it's getting the signal from the tape line, or from the CD line, or the, from the tuner. Alright, so anyway, all that's left inside here is to throw down, put in some hot glue to kind of get this under control. So, thanks to my bud Stuart for the hot glue tip. I'm a recent convert to using hot glue for things like this. I'll just kind of slide this together to show you what's going on. Okay, so here's the, well, that's the headphone jack. And then here's the auxiliary input jack. So I'll just print a little label and stick it on there saying aux in. <clears throat> so for it to work, I have to have the, the radio on. So I can put a little label on there that says aux or whatever. Just turn the radio on. Get some volume here. Okay, so 99.5 The Mountain, we got David Bowie under pressure. And the MP3 player, we've got Norris Barkley crazy. Ready? So there we go. Got the aux cable playing Norv Brackley. Now the only thing I did notice is that to match the radio volume, it seems that the the MP3 player has to be at max volume. So to preserve battery, you can have the MP3 player down and crank the volume on the boombox. But then if you yank the aux, yikes, man. <laughs> 